Hey, Wire Monkeys. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Cabling. This episode, we're going international trainer talk. Welcome to the show where we tackle the tough questions submitted by apprentices, installers, technicians, project managers, estimators, even customers. We're connecting at the human level so that we can connect the world. If you're watching this show on YouTube, would you mind hitting the subscribe button? And don't forget that bell button so we can help educate, encourage, and enrich the lives of people in the ICT industry. Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What are you doing? You know we do a live stream on LinkedIn, TikTok, Facebook, and a bunch of other platforms where you get to ask your favorite RCDD, and you know that's me, your favorite RCDD, questions on installation, certification, design. I even do career path questions. But I can hear you now. Chuck, I'm driving my truck at Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. I don't want to get into an accident. I got you covered. We record them, and you can watch them at your convenience. And finally, while this show is free and will always remain free, if you find value in this content, would you click on that QR code right there? You can buy me a cup of coffee. You can even schedule a 15-minute one-on-one call with me, after hours, of course. And you can also visit our Amazon link for our products and stuff for the show. We're also looking for corporate sponsorship as well. When I started this show four years ago, it's vastly different from what I envisioned from when I first started this journey. I first started this journey, I thought it would just be me talking to a bunch of people, you know, locally. I had no idea that this show would go beyond America. I have I have people who reach out to me all the time. I got shows people lined to come on the on the show to be guests and stuff like that. And and I get people with questions and stuff and and some of them are really great questions that I gotta do research for. So that's what I really like about this show, because it really reinforces that while we might live in separate countries, we're real all struggling with the same issues. So so what I did was I, I reached out to a, a fellow trainer, and we're going to have some training talk, and we're going to talk about training and, and challenging issues that a lot of people are facing in not just the U.S., but abroad as well. So welcome to the, welcome to the show, Sheriff. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, and thanks for the great introduction. I am really honored to be on your show. And hopefully we answer the questions that usually people on this side of the world, they are seeking for. Absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and uh, give the audience member, uh, audience members th- the 30-second highlight of who you are and who do you work for and what do you do? Uh, the, so, Thank you for that. Uh, actually, I am the managing director of Pro Skills Trainings. We are certified. Uh, we we have our own facility for Bixi. We are authorized training facility for Bixi in Saudi Arabia. We are also ADTP as well, and we do a lot of other trainings as well. Like we have five G, six G trainings. We have a fluke CCTV training also. So we have a lot of trainings that are you know, uh, that are related to ICT, IT, and telecom that our industry requires, basically. Yeah, you know, I've, I'm not your typical American. I've been outside the U.S. on several occasions and been to many countries and stuff like that. And But it was always for vacation. I never, well, except for once, I did go out, I did go to the U.K. one time to teach. So most of the time I'm there as a, as a tourist and stuff. So I always got to wondering, you know, how is it really different? You know, again, I'm, I, I'm U.S. centric, right? I, I deal with U.S. issues. and stuff. So and yeah. one of the biggest things that I think maybe I hear is um, recognition, right? Uh, uh, or maybe even awareness for credentialing. Um, I fight that battle yeah. here in the U.S., believe it or not, sometimes. Um, I, you know, I run into two major two major crowds, the, those who don't believe in credentialing and the others who, huh? Who, credentialing? I can get certified? <laughs> what's that? <laughs> what kind of challenges or what's the biggest challenge you're facing in Saudi Arabia for as far as credentialing? See, to be very frank with you, you know, this is the question that I need to answer in a very elaborative way. Actually, this is uh, something, you know, I wo- when I, I will go from the past, actually. 
So when I was working in the, my past company, so I was there as an ICT director and I was handling a lot of products as a product manager as well. So in that one, you know, what I faced was the biggest challenge was during the installation of those products. Even the products are very good. Even the brands are very big, uh, the globally recognized brands everywhere they are approved. But the major issue related to the installation was there, actually. So there was major lack of awareness regarding the credentials were there. And the another problem, you know, when we are talking about the credential here in this part of the world is the cultural barrier as well. So because English is our second language, you know, so that is something else also that we needs to be addressed. And the people who are working here in Saudi Arabia, uh, the mostly the technicians or the installers, they are from different countries like uh, South Asian countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Far East countries like Philippines. So these are the people who are mostly like I would say uh, 80 to 90 percent of the technicians and the installers are from those type of places. So for them to address this challenge of this language is quite big, actually. And the other problem uh, that I felt here is the resource constraint. The resource is not available. So something like this, uh, like uh, authorized training facility was not available here before. This is the first time, you know, I took this initiative. I took a chance on my career, actually, just to impart that knowledge that I have, whatever I can give to the others so that to, you know, to enhance the quality of the projects, this, this beautiful country uh, that they are seeking for. There is a lot of major mega projects, giga projects that are running in Saudi Arabia. And you maybe even you are seeing those ads on in USA as well. I've noticed that probably over the guess, or maybe I've only, I can't say this happened five years ago, but I've only started noticing it five years ago. Um, <clears throat> there seems to have been a concerted effort by, organizations like Bixi to try to do more things in Saudi Arabia. Is, 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 is that, am I correct in saying that or am I incorrect? Uh, it is there actually before we used to have a Bixi MEA. Uh, there was a region was there, but now I think so due to Corona that was closed, the office is closed now. So even though, you know, the awareness and up, you know, the challenges that we are facing here is to, you know, to create that ecosystem that people should understand that what these credentials hold for their work and their work culture, basically. So let me ask you this. One of the things I find is you, people don't understand the credentialing process. They don't understand, for example, they don't understand what's the difference between, you know, installer copper, installer fiber or RCDD or OSP, right? What are some of the misconceptions, um, especially dealing with like value and credentialing and stuff that you find in your your part of the, the world? See, the value of credentialing, the major issue over here is that, uh, you know, the industry recognition. So the people, the employers that they are working for, they should also know the value of an RCDD. Like uh, recently, I got a call from one of the system integrator. He called me, he saw that uh, on the project, uh, it is mentioned that the project manager for the ICT should be an RCDD. So he called me, he told me like, I need uh, 10 people from my team uh, to be certified as an uh, RCDD. I will send you all of them, give them the certificates and send it back to them. Oh, I'll yeah. pay you on that. You know, just you know, getting your RCDD is just like, you know, I don't know, going to your local store and yeah, buying yeah. a certificate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know some people who tried <laughs> so for years that, to get the RCDD. Yeah. Years. And I know. Yeah. yeah. Even me also. I took two years yeah. to, to pass this. Exactly. I, I know of an individual that I used to work with. He, he failed the exam four times before he finally passed. You know, you, it's getting it's one of the best things I ever did for my career was getting my RCDD. But I'm telling you right now, it was not one of the easiest. It was not one of the easiest. 
you need to do you need to do a lot of sacrifices you know once you are a working professional it's not easy to become an rcdd you know you have to come back from work you have to study you have to convince your wife that you are studying only you are not talking to another it's person it's funny you say that because when i run my study groups that's what i tell the people that's what i tell the students i'm like forget about going out friday nights to the movies with your wife forget about going out oh, yeah, you know, go to the you. pool hall on saturdays until you're done with this program because you need to be focused on this yeah afterwards you can have an extra great big party at your house but until you get it yeah you need oh, to yeah, you need to buckle down because it's going to be it's going to be a journey and what i was fortunate enough that the company i worked for um they value that credential and they actually helped me get the credential i they didn't pay for um for me to take a class but they did pay for the books and the testing fee and they paid for me to travel cuz i had to go take my test like four or five states away this is back before they were doing everything through Pearson review and so luckily i did have the support um to get that to get my to get my to get my rcd what role do you believe employers have as as uh and industry leaders this is not just a limit just to, to employers in promoting the importance of those credentials see uh, there are multiple things that the employers and the industry leaders they can play as a crucial role in promoting the importance of these credentialing so basically like uh, for the end users if they are sen- setting a standard that on your uh, projects the people who are designing the ict projects they should be uh, uh, like rcdd or the, the one who is managing the project he should be an rtpm and the people who are doing the installation they should be at least installer certified and the supervisor he should be like a technician level certified person so then you know the the value of those things will will show them the results actually so they have to do they have to start this one and as you mentioned like uh, your uh, company they paid for your travels they paid for your books they paid for your exams so those types of incentives also they need to take care of that those this is one of the major important point actually so here in this part of the world we have this problem actually so there are a lot of individuals coming to me they are coming to me that sir give me like 50% discount 60% discount on the trainings and uh, because my employer is not paying i am paying it from my salary even me also you know i did all my certification i invested i would not say i spent i would say i invested this on my growth basically and the support training also there should be there like uh, all those type of people they need to be trained like for example if there is some project or something like this is there so those type of people at least either from the end user side or from the consultant side or from the system integrator side they should invest uh, in the support uh, of the training of the their employees you know one of the one of the best things a company can do for itself is to invest in its people and the the greater comp- the, the good companies get that concept there's a lot of companies that don't and so i've come across a lot of people you know via the podcast and and just going to bixie conferences because i'm i'm a chatty cathy at a, at a bixie conference i talk to everybody and uh just from talking to people and there's a a lot of people who are willing and let's be honest training training's not cheap and they're yeah. willing to go out and pay for it themselves. yeah i agree know, because they, they realize the value yeah, in it right? and you know one of the things beautiful one of the things too is a lot of people don't realize this and and you know i i do because i, I don't know why but i just do but saudi arabia is a, is a great country and it's 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 got a lot of a lot of people don't realize how beautiful it is over there and you guys are also I would say, I want to say, on the leading edge of of rapidly developing technology and, and 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 deploying technology, right? So, how can credentialing, how can credentialing help make that a priority? And and what about maybe a vocational education? Do you guys have that there? uh yeah there is a lot of government support is nowadays as you mentioned it's a very beautiful country and you should you know you and your friends and your family should visit saudi arabia we have a riyadh season coming up and there is a lot of events going on here another thing like as you mentioned you know that uh, in saudi arabia now this thing have recently started 
actually the digitization age you would say the vision uh, 2030 of saudi arabia and the vision of the new crown prince and the king of saudi arabia they want to digitize they want to be like the number one in the you know technological uh, field so even this is my goal as well to prepare those people to reach that peak to reach that height actually so that's what i am working on this is why i built this facility and i hope that i succeed in doing so and i can help those people to achieve their dream and we have a lot of projects running on if you see uh, on you can check it on uh, youtube we have uh, neom red sea amala and uh, inshallah we will be getting uh, the 2034 uh, football uh, the fifa as well it, it amazes me just you know the more i learn about that country the more the more i, I appreciate it. i just it's just, just you guys i think I think you guys can actually set. I think you guys are setting the example for other countries to live by. To be honest with you, so you know, being a fellow trainer, um, what strategies are you deploying to help uh, encouraging professionals, especially? Let's be honest here, the young professionals, because our industry is aging out, and a lot of us, a lot of us old guys are retiring. We need to get young blood in this industry. So, so what are you guys doing to encourage the, the young workforce to get? to get into low voltage and realize, hey, this is this is a good career to be in. To answer your question, a lot of young people, you know, here, uh, they are not aware about the credentials and these things. And even they have this perception uh, from their uh, elders that uh, the experience matters more than the paper. So the piece of paper. So that is still so that's why what i am doing uh, in my facility i'm doing like open days like uh, open day for rcdd for for uh, technician courses for installer courses for project management so i'm inviting all those people i'm doing an open invite for the people come and see and then i'll do the counseling for them like how they can start the career and from where they can start the career. And there is very good initiative now from the Saudi government. Uh, they are doing a lot of effort actually to train the young Saudis. They have a lot of entities now recently opened, like uh, there is TVTC is there. Uh, this is for training, for vocational trainings basically. And then we have under Vision 2030, there is a lot of enel enablement programs are there for the young Saudis. So that is something really good, and I believe that it will take the nation to the next level. You know that you mentioned uh, that how they, how some people will say, well, the 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 experience matters more than a piece of paper. I hear the same thing. I hear the same thing, and and in some circumstances, I agree, right? Because there are some people who are what I call diploma chasers. They'll get in and they'll just go get their certificate and they say, look at me, I'm, I'm certified, but they have like three weeks experience. The best technician is going to have both experience and the credential, you know, and once you, once you get that credential, things happen, right? For number one, customers look at you differently because now you have a credential and you have to maintain that credential. And there's, there's certain requirements to maintaining any credential. To the person who just only has experience, well, you don't know if that's experience in doing category 6A cable or if that was experience doing POTS cabling from when they used to work for Ma Bell back 45 years ago. Those are two totally different things. So experience isn't always the answer. It, the, the, the right answer is experience tied with credentialing makes the best technician, right? That's what I think there. And so, so I think in a lot of ways... Yeah, I agree to your point. Sorry to interrupt you in between, actually. Actually, I have been giving fluke trainings from the last seven years now. So fluke, you know, is a tester, which is like people, they don't say they want to do cable certifications. They say, I want to do fluke test. There is nothing as fluke, <laughs> fluke test, what fluke test is. If you check the meaning of fluke in English, is totally different, actually. So I, I, yeah, so they tell me that, uh, you know, I've been using Fluke since last 20 years and what this new guy will teach yeah, me. Yeah, that's a, that's a different okay. show. But there yeah, is a lot of... Yeah, that's a different show. You... <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> biggest challenge, actually, yeah. to convince those yes. type of technicians, experienced I technicians. I fight that battle. 
I fight uh, so, that battle on a daily basis. <laughs> you know, people are like, I don't, I, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I, I never certify. I just do a continuity test. I'm like, what? Yeah. 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 Huh. And then, then, and then people say, well, I only certify when the customer pays. Okay. Yeah. As a professional, and this is my personal opinion, is not written in any books anywhere other than the book of Chuck. Yeah. You should be certifying every cable yeah. drop you do. You know, if yeah. no other, for your if no it, for your satisfaction that you know that cable's performing the way it does. So it sounds to me like there's a lot of cultural similarities between uh, between my part of the world and and your part of the world. Is there any cultural significant differences in your part of the world? that maybe people from our part of the world wouldn't really understand. The thing is that, you know, there are limited uh, resources were there before to get these type of trainings. So something like this was never here before. So you see, you you guys have ATFs since 1980s. So this is the first ATF in Saudi Arabia. So you can understand like uh, what value it holds and how uh, you know how much work i need to do actually to create that awareness yes okay you know the things but you know the things in certain direction actually in ict it is not only about copper cables and fiber cables there is a lot of other things are there there is grounding and bonding is there the pathway systems is there so those things you know the people they are missing actually so i i think that uh, it will take some time and a lot of efforts, but I'm trying my level best to, to, to impart that, uh, you know, uh, the awareness to those. I understand you had some questions you wanted to ask me. Yeah, I have uh, a lot of questions that I wanted to ask you. Uh, but I think so we have limited time. So we'll go one by one okay. for those questions. Like, uh, now how Bixie helped the major projects of the USA whether enterprise or data centers i, I could do it. so why i'm asking these questions because we have a lot of enterprise projects mega projects ega projects running a lot of data centers coming up in the next few so i can uh, i can make a whole entire show just out of just that one question right so here's the thing here in the us we have three different levels right we have codes we have standards we have best practices and i've said this more than one occasion Average installers follow the code book because that's minimum quality of construction. The better technicians follow the standards, right? Because the standards will always meet or exceed the standards. The difference between codes and standards is standards guarantees performance, codes don't. And then the best of the best of the best follow the Bixie stuff, the Bixie best practices. What does that do for people? The Bixie best practice does a lot of things. Number one, it's going to give you consistency of design, right? So from a, from an end user's perspective, if I'm choosing between two contractors, contractor A and contractor B, I know they both have, they both have RCDDs on the step. They both follow the standards. I know then at that point, it's going to be done the same no matter who I pick. So it really boils down to price and relationship, right? So it guarantees that that, that cable point is going to be put in. It's going to be, it's going to work with the technology it was designed to work with. And it's going to be consistent. Then on the other side of that, if, you, if you're hiring a company that has credentialed individuals, you know that those individuals, they not only, they, they have read the books. They know the books. They've been tested on the books. They sat in front of a proctor. And that doesn't mean that somebody's not certified is, is not as good, but that shows that that, that installer has gone one additional step. So that helps for the, the, the whole solicitation of a bid process. And I honestly think that it provides a, a superior product at the end of the day, a product that's going to work today. It's going to work tomorrow. It's going to work next month, next year. And, and correctly, just to kind of give you an example. The standard tells us that we have to put up one, uh, we have to cover one, one wall with three quarter inch AC grade plywood. Best practice say two, because they understand telecom rooms, grow equipment grows you need space for that and the standards you know when you when you look at bixie's got the the installation program they got the design program right so with the installation program that tells the installer the correct way to actually install it you know for you know 
that it's got to be, you know, three quarter inch AC grade. It tells it what grade to go by. They, it tells them how to mount it to the wall properly so it doesn't fall off. I've seen a lot of people, you know I me, mean, I'm all over social media, TikTok, Instagram, all these places. And, and I see people posting videos and I see some people, not just technicians, but people who are, who should know better, post how to do things. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's not the right way to do that. And I will interrupt you in between, actually, because you touch a very sensitive part for me. Actually, you talked about AC grade plywood. This plywood is not available in Saudi Arabia. So I went into the market to build my facility. I needed this. Uh, and without these uh, AC grade plywood, Bixi was not giving me the approval for the ATF and it should be like AC grade plywood should be there and Christina was super strict on that part. So the problem was that I went in the market, I asked them, they said, what is AC grade plywood? So you can, this is what I'm telling you, that this is something, you know, which I have to create a lot of educational awareness over here. And I need to talk about a lot of success stories, I think so, of the projects and of the people as well like how these type of uh, credentials help the people to grow in their career. Yeah, you know, that's a question I get quite often when I talk about plow and I say AC grade. Most people don't know what AC grade means. You're really just describing the finish on the plywood. You know, a piece of plywood as A grade means it's it's ready to paint. You don't have to do anything to it. A piece of plywood that's got a C grade means it can have up to six blemishes or one knot. So one side is beautiful, the other side's got some knots. That's all that really means. A lot of people think it's fire rating. It's not. It's just describing the the, the finish finish of the of the plywood. And just kind of step back and you know get back into why should they follow the best practices? You know, the best practices are written by subject matter experts who have not years of experience, decades of experience. And my my, my dad always said the best lesson the best lesson you can learn is from some somebody else's mistake. And so when you read the best practices, that's what you're doing. You're learning from the mistakes that those people made, and then they made changes so they won't make those mistakes again. So you don't have to make those mistakes. And then they thought enough of us, the younger generation, to put it in a book and say, here it is for you. Now, now you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. So that's the value, I think. That, and and it, can help, it can help residential cabling, enterprise cabling, data center cabling. And there's even books specific to those environments. There's a there's a book for data centers. There's a you know, there's a book for commercial building. It's it's, it's I think it's I really do think that it's a, a value add if you see if you see those credentials attached to you know any kind of project documentation or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so coming on to my next question, what do you think about Bixi trainings? How they can help the professionals of ICT in Saudi Arabia? So it can help twofold. We we were just talking about experience versus credentialing. So for the people who are experienced, number one, it'll make sure that their skills are current, current, right? And let me explain that one. A long, long time ago, I used to be a Bixie certified trainer. Um, when I used to work for another a company, we had we had we had we had our own ATF. And so I used to have technicians come up to me all the time, Chuck. Uh, you know, I've been a technician for ten years. Do I really have to sit in the class? No, you can, you can, you can test out. Okay, I want to test out. I said okay, and they would always fail the hands-on. Always fail the hands-on, and that's because, like for example, you know, they would, they would, uh, like they like six six blocks. They would, um, they would use a telephone lace instead of the high performance cable lace. And I'm like, yeah, and and at that point, when you you know, if we're in a class, I can educate you why they're different and you know why you need. But in a, in a testing scenario, I can't do that. I'm sorry, boom, fail, right? So so for the experienced people, make sure that your that your experience that you're so fond of is current, right? And for those who don't have the experience, it's a it's a if you don't have the the ability to find someone to mentor you because our industry is bad about this. And I've said it from day one, we're bad about mentoring our people. Although Bixie does have a mentoring program and, and it's making some headway and stuff. And even I mentor people as well. Um, we're still bad about sharing that information. 
So for there's some people either a, they don't want to ask someone how to do stuff or the person that they're going to ask doesn't want to give that information. You literally 90 bucks in the U S I don't know how much this will cost you in, 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 uh, in Saudi Arabia for 90 bucks. You can buy the field guides, right? Copper fiber and general practices. Read through those for anybody coming new to the industry. And you're going to know a lot about the industry right away. Right? So I think the Bixie classes that I have attended, the instructors were fantastic. Um, and I'm, I'm good friends with many training delivery training delivery specialists now, and you know, and and I know I know them personally, and I, I've seen them teach. I'm telling you, it's it's a great class. And I, if you watch my podcast, I just did the tour of the Bixie training facility, and I'm telling you what, that's like the Taj Mahal of training. I, I would love to teach in that place. I I wish I had. Yeah. I, as an instructor, that- I could. That's what, that's what I say for my training center. Also, I say it's a Disneyland of ICT. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. You took mine, so that's why yes, I took yours. Yes. Um. It's well, Disneyland's California, so it have to be the Disney World of uh, mm-hmm. of ICT training because Disney yes. World's Florida, Disneyland's California. Yeah. And, and the way I remember that is Disneyland, L A N D, L A, Los Angeles. That's how I yeah. remember the difference between those two. Yeah. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's it is uh, the Bixie classes. You know, you know, like I said, you you had, you had subject matter experts help design the books that that classes are based on. They're current. I, you you will never go wrong, never go wrong taking a Bixie class, and it's, and it's not going to be cheap. I'll tell you that right out of the gate. It's not going to be cheap. But yeah. as Dad always said, knowledge is expensive. Stupidity is more expensive. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? Your father was a wise man. You know, it took me too, way too long to realize that. Uh, now, I have two questions, actually. The last two questions for me, it's very important, actually, I need to ask you those. That why we are talking about AI data centers, we are talking about 100 gig, we are talking about 200 gig, 400 gig every day. Um, 100 gigs is increasing like every week or every month. Okay, so why do we need a Bixi certified technician or an installer for those data centers? First off, let's take a look at data centers, right? It, 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 compared to a regular network, like a network at a, at a, in a small office somewhere. If you have a small little business and that network goes down, yeah, there's pain. Yeah, there's delays. If a data center goes down, you're talking about huge outages. We're talking about outages that could affect airplanes being able to land or be scheduled to take off. And these are things that just happened relatively recently in the past. So data centers must maintain that uptime. And the way that they do that is to make sure that the stuff gets installed in a way that's going to ensure that the equipment and the cable performs the way it was designed. It was tested and certified. So that way there's a, that guarantee and that there's, it's also looking towards the future. And that's what the whole training program is about. So, a certified installer has to go through that processes, understand the processes, and they got to stay current. That's the best thing about theirs. They got to stay current. They, a lot of people don't realize they know RCDDs got to get CECs, but so do Bixie technicians. So they got to stay current too. So they're they're staying plugged in and saying, "Oh, look, hey, look, there's this. You know, we we can do up to 400 gig now over fiber." And so, so you got to stay current with that technology. So if you get that Bixie certified technician, then you know that. They're staying up to date, they're staying current, and they understand the, the installation practice versus new versus old. What value that you think that this authorized training facility uh, of Bixi uh, in Riyadh will provide to the people here in this region? I think it will elevate the level of professionalism amongst the installation people in, in your area. I really do. Um, because I've found that even people who I know who aren't credentialed, they understand, they'll, 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 you, you, you probably even heard this yourself. They'll say, oh yeah, that's the Bixie way of doing it, right? You yeah. hear that a lot. Well, that, so, so just, yeah, just, by, just by some people getting their certifications and, and learning that stuff, it drags everybody else along with it because they realize, oh, well, that's the correct way, then, then I've got to do it that way too. So it's going to elevate the professionalism and the quality 
of the people in the area. I've got, that's the best thing to do. It's, and you know, and I'm glad to see that you've created your own ATF there. And, and again, like I said, you know, maybe one day I'll get to come out there and visit you and watch you teach a class in that, in that, in that, in that Disney world of sure. ICT. You will be invited. <laughs> Actually, a lot of people here, they think like, uh, now I'm communicating to a lot of system integrators and those people, they are saying it is too time consuming. So what do you have to say about this? Like uh, these credential, like five days, they need to take off their team from the project and they, they will be sitting here and studying. Oh, that's, 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 studying that, the, that's, uh, that's, that's such a great question because, you know, companies, that's, that's the biggest thing. I can't afford to take somebody out of the field. Okay. All right. So if you were to hire somebody who has the skill sets that this credential is going to give that person, how much time would that take to get them up to speed with your company? Yes, you got you got to pay travel expenses, costs for the classes and and the and the curriculum and the books and all that stuff. But you're going to you're going to come back with a a a better installer, a better designer. And one of the things I found from from training people over the last two decades is when as a trainer when you train somebody, they become What's the word I'm looking for? They become more loyal. They're, 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 they will, they will like, they, 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 yeah. they feel that it increases that relationship with you and your employer. Because look, my employer yeah. is it's no longer just a cursory supervisor apprentice relationship. Look, this company, he recommended me to go take this class because he saw, he saw something in me that would help, that can make me better. It can make me a better technician a better project manager. I can make more money. They saw something in me and it just creates a better relationship between the employee and the employer. It, it's, it's a, it is a win, win, win scenario. You, yeah, yeah, it's expensive. A counter question to that. Go ahead. Okay. So now uh, once I'm able to convince them about this, so they are saying that if they will get this certification, why they will stay with me? Oh, they will get a new job with that, a higher salary. Oh, that <laughs> man, you got some great questions, my brother. You got some great questions. So I look at it this way, and there's a couple of trains of thoughts here. Um, I have worked for companies in the past that they would train you, they would send you to Bixie classes, but they'll make you sign a training agreement saying, "Okay, look, I'm paying you know two thousand, five thousand dollars to send you to this class." travel expenses, class, all that stuff. I don't want you to leave. So they'll make you sign a training agreement saying, look, if you leave, you got to stay here for two years. And if you leave before then, then you got to pay back a prorated portion of that two years. I get that. I understand that. I'm of the mindset that you're going to want to send the cream of the crop, your best technicians. You want to reward yeah. loyalty where you're not worried about them taking that certification and then jumping ship to go work somewhere else for another additional 10 cents an hour. Right. They've, they've proven themselves, you know, through relationship, through working and dedication that, you know, they're going to be around. They're just going to be around. And if they don't, okay. That it's, it's a decision you had to make and you know, off they go, they go to another company. One of the things I've learned about being in this industry for four decades, well, four plus decades, the world's kind of funny. Karma, karma's, karma comes around and bites you. And I've seen people come back yeah. to the original companies because they, they left to go somewhere else where they thought the grass was greener or the sand was tanner, yeah. right? And then yeah. they realize, you know what? I really had it better back at my previous employment. They, they come, some, come back. So, you know. Yeah. That's how, that's how it comes. Even I miss my last uh, general manager, actually. He was one of the greatest leader I had in my life, actually. He was the one who supported me a lot. And because of him, I am now a certified trainer, actually. Yeah. So, But yeah, we know that we, we will appreciate those type of people all our life. Yeah, I agree 100%. I had uh, uh, the last company, I, well, not the last company I worked with as a contractor, but the, the, the one I probably spent the most time with. I had a, uh, a supervisor who took me under his wing and he mentored me and he put me through training and all this stuff. And, 
And I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have him as a, as a mentor at that period of time. Unfortunately, we had a falling out. And so that relationship is no longer there. But I'm telling you what, had it not been for his guidance, I, I wouldn't have achieved the things that I achieved in my career for sure. Yeah, but you need a mentor. For me, uh, my mentor was Nina Desai. I think you you know Nina. Uh, he's uh, he has his own ATF in India, in Bixi, India. So this was the guy who was my mentor who guided me actually the path that yeah. I am in now. Hey, it, so that's all from. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, um, can you take us on a tour through your ATF? Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Show us some of the cool stuff you Why have. Not? Yeah, we have a lot of things, actually. I think so. Uh, those things were not there in the Big C ATF as well, like the FDT. Yep. Here we have that one as well. And then we have complete, this is our training facility here. And so we have all types of testers. Even we have uh, active network testers as well. Some of them from from Trend, and very soon, very soon we will receive from the other vendors as well. There is a lot of support actually that I got from my fellow vendors like uh, the Twiler, Corning, Retal, uh, Comscope, Fluke Networks, AEM, VRV. So they have been very generous also to support me. So this is this is the part. Actually, I what I did, I put all the cabinets with doors and the enclosures on one side and the open racks on the other side. That's beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. The uh, my new podcast studio yeah. that I'm currently working on is going to look like a Bixi ATF. Yeah. I've got I've got one ten blocks. I've got oh, Bix blocks. Nice. I've got my two post rack. Yeah. I've got a wall cam mount rack cabinet yeah. coming and. It's gonna be it's gonna be just like an ATF, but just a lot smaller. This is our splashing oh, station. Nice. Yeah, and we have all the tools as well. Whatever tools are required, we have all the tools. And to be frank with you, you know, it took me a lot of time. Actually, it took me one year to build this facility because seventy percent of the items that are required by an ATF were not available in Saudi Arabia. So I have to get them from the US, like small things like, you know, two whole lugs, UL certified two whole lugs were not there before. It's, till now, we don't have it actually. There is no one who has stock of these items because there is no requirement. So, and why this two whole lug is required, you know, I have been teaching this a lot uh, on my grounding and bonding classes. So this is the wall for our big C ATF. And this is our small library where we will be having so, and this is our team where they are sitting. This is for our team. And these are some of my credentials. Wow, those are a lot of credentials. So my Holy. office. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I, that's what actually my wife is always complaining about. That uh, even after, you know, you get uh, this bad habit of reading once you get your RCVD. Yes. So, because RCDD makes you read every day because what once you are reading the TDMM, first time you will read the chapter one and then you start the chapter two, then you finish the chapter two and then you don't know what was there in yep. the chapter one. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, you got to read it all the time. That's so, for sure. And you got to stay current. Yeah, I agree. got to stay current. Yeah. So. That's all for today from my side. If you have any other questions you want to choose. I'm good. I, uh, I appreciate please. the tour. And I, and I definitely look forward to the day of visiting, you know, visiting your city and being able to walk through your, your facility. You, know, you are most welcome. Anytime you want to, we will arrange. Sounds like a plan. Thank you for coming on the show today, Sheriff. Okay. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.